Welcome to Slowdown is the New Outage. As an industry, we're getting better at preventing outages with fewer each year. Now, Actonemics' research into the digital reflex shows that slowdowns don't get the same focus from IT towns. However, slowdowns will cost customers and revenue the same as outages would, and we should prepare for addressing slowdowns as we do outages. Observability is getting some buzz, but you can only get you so far, so we're going to need to focus on drawing insight from our code. And the good news is that there are tools and processes already available that can help that. Perhaps I should introduce myself. G'day, I'm Marco. My career spans working for one of the top 50 international banks, managing data centers for hospitals, and managing teams in 13 different countries. Before joining AppDynamics, now part of Cisco, I spent five years as an industry analyst leading the data science team at 451 Research. I've seen technology from every side in operations, as a vendor, developer, analyst, buyer. It's given me a unique outlook on our industry. So enough about me, let's start by looking at the differences between outages and slowdowns. You know it when you have an outage. When the farmer accidentally plows through the fibre cable, your application goes down immediately. Or when that blackout takes out your cloud provider, your application goes down immediately. Icons go red. Outages are obvious. But what are the characteristics of outages? Well, outages are immediate. The code crashes, the user knows. And because of that, we in IT tend to react in panic mode. We have to get a backup immediately. So the outages are noisy, icons are red, tickets are raised, people tweet, phones beep, Slack channels ping. When we hit an outage, it's, it's sort of like that final straw that breaks the camel's back. There's often many other things going on that also need to be addressed, but that final straw causes the outage. And that's why you'll see people have debates about whether root cause and root cause analysis are good terms to use, but they're fine. But outages are fewer, today, thanks to high availability and RAID and cloud and better hardware and DevOps practices and SRE practices. But slowdowns are different. Slowdowns are subtle. They accumulate. The DBA adds a little bit of function and makes a SQL call just a little slower. Then the infrastructure team needs some resources and they take a pot out of your Kubernetes cluster, just making it a little bit slower. And maybe that manager who practices hacky sack near the back of the rack it loosens a few cables and, and a little errors are starting to be added to regular traffic. Just a little slow. But the customer in the middle gets the accumulated slowdown. They just delete your app and go for a faster app. So what are the characteristics of slowdowns? Well, slowdowns are commonly caused by a resource constraint. Not enough of a resource or using the resource poorly or, or contention for a resource. If you have too many network transactions on a narrow bandwidth, or if system memory, memory is filled with unnecessary page locks, a slowdown will resolve. And they tend to be incremental because they are commonly a resource constraint. They, we often can fix them without actually solving them. We just throw more resources at them. Also, they tend to be silent. When things slow down just a little, you don't tend to get phone calls or tickets. It's not clearly broken, so customers tend to self-blame. Um, they're just gonna delete your app and find a new one. So slowdown is sort of, you know, if, if outages are the straw, slowdowns are the camel. So when there's no outages, then what will drive customer loss? Well, the important thing here is slowdown is the new outage. Hashtag sitno. But do slowdowns really matter? Well, here's a rule of thumb in the online retail industry from Amazon. Let's spend a moment on this number. For simplicity, let's assume your application was bringing revenue in evenly 24-7, 365. Then it would take about an 87 hour outage to lose 1% of sales in the year. So just in that rough number, you can equate a continuous 100 millisecond delay in, in this Amazon stat with an 87 hour outage. Now think about your reaction. Think about how you react to a 100 millisecond slowdown versus your reaction if your code was driving an 87 hour outage. Would you react the same? Before I go into how to prepare for slowdowns, Let's talk briefly about observability. Observability is getting some buzz at the moment. So let's take a quick look at how that fits into application performance management or APM. Now this is just my definition of observability. You wanna understand your code is, is what your code's doing to the infrastructure, across versions, across the complete customer environment. And the most important word in this definition is unpredictable because the metric you're not watching will kill you. Observability or observable metrics need context to become actionable insight. 
Observability has promise, and there's some interesting work being done around open telemetry, but it doesn't go far enough. If you think of where observability was born, D-trace or manual breakpoints, they might be great for a single application on a single machine. Yet as Cindy Sridharan points out in her book, Distributed Systems Observability, that they, those sort of things will often fall short while debugging distributed systems as a whole. Observability misses the complete customer experience. When trying to diagnose a complete customer experience relying on multiple business transactions and, and in a distributed multi-cloud with production applications, observability falls short of insight. The good news is that if you've implemented monitoring, the APM used to react can be expanded to observe and diagnose slowdown. So while observability supports diagnosis, you need insight for the resolution of the issue. Observability and open telemetry are really about collecting data. It's fine if you already know exactly the right question to ask, but to get to insight, you need to get context around what you're collecting, around what you're observing, and bringing that data together and correlating it to baselines or to prior versions. Well, insight is giving you the right answers rather than proposing questions. So what do you need for this sort of insight? Delivering insight requires several key functions. Overhead minimization for when performance is normal. Baselines, identifying that normal performance, right? Because you don't want to overload an environment with maintaining observability or visibility in the environment. And similarly, you don't want to have to manually set thresholds for every single metric. There are too many to understand. Seg you need segmented metrics of customer business transactions so that you can identify where the weak points in the transaction are. And you need a common trusted metric source that spans across technology silos. Next, you need levers that will isolate code portions within the production environment. And then finally, as I mentioned, that noise filtering that comes from machine learning trained filters to, for anomaly detection to address that alert fatigue so that you're not, it's not getting warned every second that something weird is going on when in fact it's just you know, some metrics moving together because you have a better marketing program so you have some more customers coming in. If you have to manually inject breakpoints or SDKs or trace IDs within each application, then you're incurring significant technical debt. Yet an SRE supporting APM solution can commonly auto inject trace IDs for you, giving you that same observability across multiple applications without having to break into each application. Moving to a DevOps or an SRE model is problematic when you lack an understanding of how to observe and gain insight from metrics. Remember, it's the metric you don't watch that bites you. Listen, you can check out my DevNet Create session titled Having New Eyes for more detail on observability. What you should do to be ready for slowdowns, well, you see, if you're gonna build up your slowdown response team inside your company, well, you need to start with a common source of truth, a common view, looking at APM as a way of creating that common view across silos. And remember that observability needs context. And that's where AIOps comes in. An AIOps platform uh, will collect data from observability sources, from open telemetry, from agents, and it correlates them all. And that applies machine learning to give context and insight to the logs and metrics and events that are being gathered by all these things. And then you want a query language, something that will allow you to explore the data to answer unpredictable questions, perhaps even before the outage or the slowdown has occurred. You want to be able to explore and just, you know, what's happening inside here? Where are my tightest, you know, what are my critical sections of code that are really constraining the overall transaction? Well, that's the sort of great thing about having explorable data, having a query language. Now, uh, and then finally, that deep but siloed skill set that got you where you are, well, maybe you're a front end coder or a network query or a Kubernetes expert today, but that's only going to get you so far. You need to have T-shaped skills. Keep your specialization as an essential bar, as the deep level of knowledge, but also gain general skills across the silos. Learn about databases if you're a coder. Learn about microservices if you're 
you know, if you're an operator, learn about some of the strengths and weaknesses of languages and how they function when they're executing. Then you'll be ready by developing a T-shaped team and T-shaped, sorry, T-shaped skills within your team, you'll be ready for your slowdown response. So a couple of quick takeaways here. So if you would like to in, try installing AppDynamics with a, with a sample program that we write, just a dumb little program um, application, just so you can see how it works, then, then this DevNet sandbox is for you. Um, it's free, just go in there. You've got to have a DevNet sign on, but you wouldn't be at this event if you didn't. And then I'm available. You can get me on Twitter. You can uh, get me on WebEx. You can get me via email. But mainly I want to thank you for your time and just say I hope you have a fantastic rest of your DevNet create.